Hello, I'm Shane McDonald, an artist in Marietta, Georgia. I teach drawing and painting at my studio at the Artisan Resource Center off of Cough Parkway. This video shows a demonstration continuing a painting of a landscape I started in one of my classes. Hey, it looks like I need to work on the sky up here uh, and indicate some of these clouds. So I'm gonna start by mixing up some paint. Looking at the color at an angle uh, against the, the backlight of the screen. So I do need to get this lighter. And this is just the start. I need to alter it as well because it needs to connect with the peach, peachy orange. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with that, the peachy orange. I'm gonna use cadmium red, bringing that into the blue. Along with some yellow. This is going to be the color in between the brighter blue at the top and towards the yellow, yellow peach that's right there. And that goes lighter too, so I'm going to keep on adding more white so the color as it comes down closer to the yellow it gets lighter. And this is just really thin paint. It's not going to really affect anything, but I'll go ahead and make, mix up the light pink as well, the, the apricot peachy color next. Just noticing a few nuances in the clouds back here in the mountains that are a little bit lighter. And again, let the bristles of your brush dance around on the surface of the painting. That's some of the nuance. Your signature stroke is what that is. You don't want your painting to look like it is paint by number. Let those strokes be expressive. Going a little bit cooler, so I'm bringing in a little bit of cadmium, um, I'm sorry, alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue as I go back into a second pass on the mountains here. And I'm seeing that I have my drawing wrong on the right, the right mountain. It should be a little bit taller over here. So I'm gonna adjust that next. Going back into some of my darker tones, a little bit of uh, radiant green. And because I'm using green, I always wanna use a little bit of red to neutralize it, adding it to my ultramarine blue as well, because I need to go darker and a little bit less intense. It should be a little bit more green Maybe some sap green because it needs to be a little bit warmer. And instead of alizarin, maybe some cadmium, which is a more orangey red. And that looks like it's gonna be more like the right color. 
and my mountain should be way up here instead, closer to, closer to the horizon line. So my feeling after putting those darker clouds in that I still, I need to go a little bit lighter with the top part of the sky, setting more white. And I am seeing a little bit of a greenish tint, so um, a little bit more greenish right here, a little bit less gray, a little bit higher intensity. Sometimes you don't know how intense things should go until you have your relative colors down. So this is my viridian green. I'm just adding a little bit of it to to the sky mixture. A little bit more, just a, ta just a tad more yellow. In most paintings I find you need at least four or five times more white than your other pigments. More yellow, more green. And I'm using Viridian because it's a little bit, it's a little bit stronger than sap green. And I'm just adding a little bit more. I think the intensity, especially added with the, the yellow, will get the more what I need. And I'm looking for that value change between the cloud. And the sky. The reference just seems to be brighter. And just as a good habit, just just feel free to check your check your color, check your value, use your palette knife if it's easier. That's what I often find to be the case. I'm looking at it from a side. That looks that looks pretty good. Right about there. So I probably do need to go a little bit darker with these clouds, um, especially this one. And I think I should go ahead and make a little bit more of this transition again. Maybe make that a little bit lighter and brighter as well. Right, by brighter, I simply mean um, higher intensity color or more saturated color. See, isn't it interesting how on the palette, this color looks kind of gray, but here it actually seems to harmonize very well. It's a nice transition into the orangier color in the sky. Part of that has to do with the lighting in this, this part of the room. I'm in my other studio right now. It has more incandescent light in it. It's a little bit darker in here. Definitely looking like a, a nice sky. All right, now I'm gonna go back into the cloud. This one I think definitely needs to go more gray and a little bit darker. So this is the color I use for down here. I'm just gonna bring some of that, that warmer green with some red in it into the blue to make this a little bit grayer. And I probably still need a little bit more of the red just to make it a little bit grayer still. This is an orange or red, so that should be a good complement to this blue. And there we go. A little bit grayer here. And it seems a little bit darker towards the bottom edge. 
again, bends, bends the brush around. Part of the interest of, of a painting like this is you, you're able to see the, the brush movement. And I like the variety on the surface of the canvas, too. This area was laid down with a flat palette knife. And so I have some areas that look very thick and juicy in some areas that are kind of thin and see the canvas weave. You can use that to kind of to kind of move the eye around. But it's not only the color and values, but the texture of the surface of the painting can actually do a lot for, for the interest in your painting and moving the eye around. Backing up once in a while. And some of these darker clouds here. Kind of just fading in. It's from this mixture here, fading in into the, the, the clouds that are just hovering over the mountains. So I'm going back to the sky. I just wiped off my brush a little bit. I just want to tone down this this uh, orange just so it's a little bit more pastel. Not quite as orange, even though I like the orange. I'm trying to show you that you can get really pretty pretty close to your reference colors. Feel free to vary your strokes. I think with the with the sky, especially further um, higher up in the sky, that's where you can start using more sporadic strokes. However, in the distance, you want the majority. So that means closer to your horizon. The majority of your strokes should actually be horizontal. Um, it's just right now that I'm adding some vertical strokes just to kind of make the paint go appear a little bit more even in this area. I don't want the texture back here to show up as much as I do as it shows up here. And also, you, you're probably wondering, well, now you have to go around all these clouds. I would have to do that anyway. Um, working in, into the, around the edges of, of the clouds helps me to soften their edges. So um, just because you have covered one area of your painting, such as the sky, doesn't mean you shouldn't go back and, and fix things that aren't working the way you want them to. These subtle color variations are so important. I mean, it's the main part of the picture. Why, why would we paint this if we didn't get the colors just right or exactly what you wanted to achieve? This painting is certainly about the sky and these other things in the mountains are just kind of leading us to it. So it's like the background information. It's the setting to our hero. Our hero is definitely the sky and perhaps his relationship to the edges of the mountains. That's my, my opinion anyway. There's plenty of nuances and other cast members here that are vying for their, the attention and they should because they help to tell the story. I pulled across here because I, I was getting a little bit too ticky with the texture of that cloud. And it looks like I didn't get this cloud quite dark enough. Again, these are, these are background characters. Now I'm working wet into wet, so some of these values that I'm putting on are actually darker on my brush, but I'm working it in working into the wet paint, which has more white in it. And that's making it appear a little bit dark, a little bit lighter. I really want to pay attention to these streaks of the, of the sky showing between these clouds. So I'm, I'm varying my pressure from my brush so I can use the brush as I twist it and pull it. I don't know how it changes the shape of the line that I'm creating or the brush stroke. Some of the strokes are pulled. I still want to create a little bit of a modeled effect so it looks a little bit darker towards the bottom. So I'm building up a little bit more dark towards the bottom of these clouds. This is still just a, 
uh, a la prima style painting. I might decide later if I really wanted to get even more realistic and more precise with my color. I could slow down it and do a, a, a glazing over this once it's dry, once the paint is dry. Pay really close attention to these smaller sections of paint. But then it would be more of a studio painting than a plein air painting, an olive cream of painting. I like to think of all paintings as kind of like being a vignette of some sort, where you have your stage, which is the center two thirds of the canvas, and everything else on the edges should be designed to keep you going in. So this is sap green, and I'm just scraping in this area, and I'm gonna just mix it in with the sap green. And I need to go darker than that. I knew I needed to go bluer too, but I'm just trying to mix plenty of paint here. I'm going to go automatically with some red, some darker red, preferably because I need to go darker, and ultramarine blue. Mainly the ultramarine because I need to go darker. Okay, it's too red, so even more blue and green. This time I pulled from the Viridian and Ultramarine. It's better. I think it can go even darker. So I'm going to pull that aside. Well, actually, I'll keep that part here. And I'm going to see if I can get even darker over here. Just using a small amount of that. So more pure Ultramarine and green. And value wise, we're much thinner now. See, that's quite a bit darker than it was before. We establish the shape of the clouds. So I'm going to go around those clouds a little bit. And I'm just kind of coating over this sticky, kind of sticky paint. It's drying pretty fast. I can feel it tugging as I pull a brush across it, but I don't think I really need um, any medium because I'm really close to the end of the end of the painting process, I think. So I can just work it in. I do a lot of squinting, so I'm, I'm noticing that uh, there's still a few variations in here that I want to flatten out just a little bit more. So I'm being more careful about where my brush is going. And here I can almost count the trees. I can actually see individual trees. And I'm just going around them. Some of them are kind of fallish looking or changing, changing to reds. And I'm just going, putting in the, the green where I see more green more green here and definitely in the foreground. Yeah, I, need, I needed to get that white out of the brush just so I don't create mud here. I need to keep the color a little bit more intense. I'm working on the edges of those trees. And to be a little bit more specific as to where the points of the trees are. I mean, they're not fir trees, but some of, some of them have little points on them where the tree branches come together. 
And it's okay that there's some variation in terms of paint thickness. And I do see a few sky holes over here. So back to this tree. A little bit greener, more in relationship to the colors that I added to the foreground hill. This side of the tree is, is dark, so it's almost silhouetted. Except some ambient light might be reaching in on the edges, so I'm careful not to make it too perfectly silhouetted. I don't want to create a silhouetted sharp edge to this tree, because that would bring a lot of attention to it. Soft edge here, so it doesn't keep us from looking where we want the eye to go. I'm, I'm constantly looking back and forth to see what I'm missing, if I'm missing anything. I'm almost prolonging the anticipation of the end. Is there anything more, any more pleasure I can get out of this? So I'm going to mix this, go back to this color and just make it a little bit darker. It's this color right here. And let's go ahead and put in some of those sky holes. So there's one, five little touches, I think. But they're fairly soft. I just wiped off the brush, some of the paint off the brush, and now I'm gonna just kind of feather it in. Not too big, I don't wanna make the sky hole bigger. I just wanna make them a little soft. And here they get more orange. Go ahead and put some orange in. A little bit darker, a little bit of gray. And it should be a little bit darker. You don't want it to stand out with too much contrast because that will that will draw the eye. I don't think this painting is about the trees. But even if they were, um, that's just simply what happens. Uh, the, the color appears darker, so you want to paint it that way. Sky holes are in. I wiped off the brush. Now I'm going to blend them into the wet paint a little bit. Realize I need to add the clouds back in on this middle ground mountain. Going back to my medium sized brush, there's a little bit of a ridge right here, so I am leaving a fairly contrasty edge. So it appears that the mountain ridge is overlapping a little bit. And I'm just pulling in from this sky color, actually. I think that's a good value. It might need to go a little bit grayer, so I'll, I'll bring in a little bit of this, this reddish, orangish gray that's still very blue. So, but it just has a little bit of the cadmium red in it. A little bit of a few wispy pulls. Wispy pull here, again, a little bit more, leaving it nice and soft. Very little, very small amount of paint on the brush. You you're, feel free to use a different brush, maybe one that's softer. I feel pretty comfortable getting a soft touch with a bristle brush like this. But if you wanted something that had a softer feel to it, again, small amount of breath paint on the brush. Realizing there are a few ridges in here that I could probably probably bring out just a little bit very softly to help people understand or to help the viewer understand that these, this is a mist just coming through the trees and into the mountains. An opportunity for a lost edge is always a good thing to take advantage of. And that's one right here. From here to here, that, that's all one ridge, but I'm losing the edge because of the cloud. And that happens in nature all the time. So it's one thing that will help to convince the viewer we're looking at something, something that really exists. I'm just wiping off the brush. Not, no mineral spirits needed, but this has softer bristles. I can just do a little bit more soft blending on the edges of these cloud shapes, these little tails. They should go a little bit darker 
rather than try to bring um, just the white or the, the same value um, across and blend it in, that actually changes the value and could make a little bit, make it look a little bit muddy. So adding um, a little bit more blue, a little bit more of the color of the mountain itself into the color of the cloud as you pull, that will make it even more realistic. In other words, don't get lazy. Don't try to use one color to do the job of one thing.